I'm Brian Moran, founder of Government CIO. Welcome to Government CIO Magazine. Hi, this is Hillary Wax with Government CIO Magazine. Today we will be interviewing Angel Santa, the Deputy Chief Information Officer at the Office of Justice Programs. A couple of things, and sometimes it depends because transformation is forced on you, where you may have a disaster situation or you may have some some business change that forces you to transform. But in just in normal, typically you need the right leader with the right skills, able to get allies to come along with them, to have a goal, have a vision, but also eat their own food. Um, and it has to be a purpose. And um, I believe there has to be some integrity in this leader and that people will follow. There have been a, a, a couple of situations. If you look from a technical perspective, just migrating to the public cloud, I'm sorry, private cloud has forced us to, to look at our whole environment and what additional services we can provide. So we've been able to just pile up on top of the initial platform we put in place. We've implemented our video conferencing, collaboration tool, data analytics tools, um, we're looking at VDI, we're just about done there, we're getting ready to implement that. So just from a technical perspective, our whole infrastructure has matured. But from a human capital perspective, which is a piece I'm most proud of, is the cultural change. When you undertake a project as difficult as the one we took, it wasn't just a, an email migration or commodities type migration. This was taking our core mission systems and moving them into this private cloud that we put in place dispersed over three locations. And the confidence that the team builds is absolutely incredible. And it gives them that feel so they can do anything and accomplish anything. So just seeing that cultural change. There's always been in the IT field the, the mandate to do more, and, and you know that's the, the resources don't necessarily accompany that financial or human resources. It always goes back to managing priorities. You still do some level of innovation. You may not take on ten projects, but you can still innovate. You can still do certain projects. For us, in our case, we're continuing to innovate, even though the dollars aren't there. Uh, as far as uh, um, to do 10 things. For instance, we want to look at uh, um, WebEx on premise, or we want to look at all these different tools, but maybe we can't do that this year, but we can still do VDI. We've also done VoIP. So, so we've been able to do certain things, but just not as many. We have, OJP consists of six program offices, or business offices, if you may. And they have various vehicles. They use the websites. Um, they have events, one-on-one um, -on -one video conferencing, and various vehicles. We also have a communications office. So collectively, OJP reaches out using various vehicles. Um, the one thing I'm excited about is as we continue to evolve, OJP continues to evolve, it's, we're looking further down the line is customer relationship management. How do we uh, get a, a, an even greater handle on the information they need? Uh, um, how do we also communicate what we want to communicate to our, our partners, our constituents? But again, it's, it's how do you get a better handle on the information they need and how do you structure it so you can provide that. So that's part of a continued evolution. Right now, strategically, there's a lot of partnerships on uh, with folks with or organizations with similar uh, business functions or, or similar needs. So folks just greater uh, collaboration, but on top of that is also the, the data tools, having the data tools and the data and the information available to 
these groups so they can continue to, to, to look at similarities, look at differences, how to capitalize on what each other is doing. I don't know if it's any recent innovation, but more of the maturation of existing technologies. If we look at um, data analytic tools, which is the key, uh, um, there's greater access to these tools. These tools are more powerful, greater capabilities. There's more information out there available, social media has so many different avenues of uh, different pieces of information that can be used. So it's, how do you take all that information, make it available, and also how do you distribute that, make that outside the, the mobile uh, mobility. And if you look at the, the, uh, the tools that are out there now, the ability to work with your smartphone, tablets, not having to carry around massive machinery with you, uh, but, and apps that are available for these different devices. So I, I think that just continuing to, to mature and be available, and it still boils down to the right information at the right time and having that available. I, I've always been, uh, I think, an industrial engineer at heart. Regardless of what I've learned in my career, Deep down inside, I'm an industrial engineer. My, some, some, sometimes my wife really beats me up on that <laughs> because I seem to want to fix everything I see. I, I, I want to change it around to be more efficient. Uh, and starting as a programmer, I've always, many years ago, I, I don't want to date myself, but I'll, many years ago I started as a programmer. So I would build code that others can use as I moved over to HUD early on and led efforts there, and I uh, was able to establish coalitions on shared needs and build warehouses where you have various groups that can utilize this as a foundation to grow on. From there to FDIC establishing a, an, an, architect, uh, an architecture that other organizations can use in addition to, to us using, um, building code that was reused by others within FDIC and then on to education where, uh, along with my friend Dan Harris at education, uh, we collectively uh, established the uh, Education Grant Consortium. So with that, uh, when I came here, which is another grant agency, uh, um, when I came here, I came with the, the, the vision that I would put in place an infrastructure that can be used by other grant agencies, that can be shared. And, but not only with that vision, but also with the vision that whatever we put together would be uh, available for other services. For instance, I mentioned earlier, to, to be able to deliver video conferencing, VoIP, collaboration, data analytic tools. So, so it wasn't a single focused vision when I came in and, and I spoke with leadership here and I garnered uh, their support of CIO our uh, uh, Deputy Assistant Attorney General, uh, uh, Assistant Attorney General, and garnered their support on moving forward. Uh, so it's always been part of me that, you know, shared services is what we need to do. And sometimes if you can't produce shared services, at a minimum, it's how do you take what you've learned from a service you built and just share that. So someone doesn't have to start from scratch. You can uh, provide consulting, guidance and, and have engineers come together so that they may not use your service but they can cut down the need or, or, or the time to build it for their specific needs. Um, there's so much literature out there, so many best practices on leadership, management, uh, so many studies. Uh, I've read various books, but, but I, I think to me it still goes down to you are who you are. Uh, you don't nec may not necessarily have all the skills, leadership skills, or the associated skills to, to, uh, to move an organization. So how do you surround yourself with the right people that can kind of complement the skills that, that, that you're lacking on? Uh, how do you motivate people to get the job done? How do you establish partnerships? Uh, so I've always tried to establish partnerships. 
uh, uh, build the integrity of an organization such that uh, um, to establish partnerships, you need to be able to, to have some level of integrity. I've always felt you can't manufacture some skills, some leadership skills. The soft skills, either you have it or you don't. People could see right through that. And I think it's very important for a leader to have the soft skills. I mean, personally, I believe it's very important to have soft skills. Uh, and, and how do you utilize that to help folks move forward on various initiatives? I think from a technology perspective, we've done a lot. There, there, there's just so much we've done to put in place, including just tearing apart a whole infrastructure and, and putting together a whole different tool set for the organization to move forward. Um, there's a lot coming, which I'm excited about, uh, and being able to work with the leadership and move OJP forward. As we look at knowledge management, on how, as we look at working more closely with our constituents, with our partners, with the grantees, and not that we're not working closely with them now, but there are additional things that we're looking forward to move in the future, greater partnerships, understanding what are the questions that they have out there, what are the questions we need to answer, what, are the, what, are the, what is the information we're trying to communicate. So how do you put all that together and being able to, 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 to make that value available outside? There's new, there are new initiatives, open data, which is going to be more transparent. We actually uh, support all those initiatives. I mean, we, we provide data, data.gov, census, and all these different areas for, for, for data. Uh, but I, I think to me, um, again, it goes back to me, the highlight has always been, and I guess throughout my career, is, is, is the cultural change in an organization and helping that organization move forward and, and gain respect from the clients and gain uh, uh, confidence inside. And, and also, you can't form partnerships if you don't have the integrity, if, you don't have, if they don't have the belief that you can do the work. So you can talk, but you, until you can deliver and you can prove that you deliver time and time again, you're not gonna be able to get these partnerships. And we've been fortunate to, to most recently establish some partnerships with some of the offices at OJP and, and, and shared visions and, and shared goals, and we're going to actively move forward. So, so I think to me, regardless of the technological stuff I've accomplished in my career, I'm more proud of being able to change the culture and, and take the organization forward and, and, and see people just, just go out and, and do things that they possibly thought they couldn't do themselves and to do it as a group. So that, that's the most thing that I'm proud of and I'm, and I'm looking forward to continue to move down that path.